Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about what happens when a binary number ends with two zeros. We're also going to be talking about what happens when a binary number ends in k zeros, where k is some positive integer. This problem can be found in your free online discrete math textbook, and I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check that out. Alright, let's get started. So this problem says if a problem... So this problem says that if a positive integer is a multiple of 100, we can identify this fact from its decimal representation since it will end with two zeros. What can you say about a positive integer if its binary representation ends with two zeros? What if it ends in k zeros? Well, let's try looking at some numbers that end with two zeros. So let's try one zero zero. This is a binary number. This is two squared, which is four. All right, what about one, one, zero, zero? Well, this is two cubed plus two squared, which is 12. What about one, 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 zero, zero? Well, this is to the fourth power plus two cubed plus two squared, which is 28. Okay. One zero one zero zero that ends in two zeros. What would this one be? Well, this is two to the fourth plus two squared, which is 20. So what do you notice about all of these numbers in base 10? Do you notice any patterns? Well, they're all even. They're also technically all divisible by four, but maybe that's just, maybe those are coincidences. How do we know whether or not these patterns are actually real? And well, you can keep trying and convince yourself eventually, but that's not a really good way of convincing yourself. That's not solidifying with 100% certainty that, that, that this is true. So what can we do here? Well, suppose I have a binary number where this is a zero, a one, a two, a n minus two, a n minus one. So there are a total of n bits here. And we're gonna suppose that a zero is zero and a one is zero. This means that my furthest two bits are zeros. So what does that mean when we represent this binary representation in terms of base 10? Well, to convert this to base 10, we would need different powers of two. Now the coefficients to all of these terms are precisely these terms here, these placeholders. So this would be a zero times two to the power of zero, which is just zero times two to the power of zero. This coefficient would also be a zero because the furthest right two coefficients are both zero, that's by assumption. And then over here we have a n minus two, a n minus one. These are multiplications. So I have a total of n terms, but these are just zero. And so what am I left with? I'm left with a n minus one times two to the n minus one plus a n minus two times two to the power of n minus two, all the way down to what? Well, these terms are all zero. And so my last term would be a two times two squared. That'd be the last term. That's not, that could possibly be non-zero. Now, what do all of these terms have in common? Well, n in this case is greater than two. How do I know that? Well, because the left or the rightmost two bits have to both be zero. And so that means we need at least three bits. So that means that all of these powers here are all greater than or equal to two. All the exponents to these powers of two are all greater than or equal to two. 
That means I can factor out a 4. Well, by algebra, this is a n minus 1 times 2 to the n minus 3 plus a n minus 2 times 2 to the n minus 4 all the way down to a2 times, well, we factored out that 4, so we're left with that. And so this is a positive integer, and this is a 4, which means that if my right two bits are zeros, then that means that the binary number is divisible by four. But what if we end in k zeros? What about k zeros here? Well, it's gonna be the same line of reasoning. Instead of factoring out two squared, we would factor out two to the kth power. So instead of a four here, it would be to the kth power. And instead of a two here, this would be a k. And everything would be the same. This would be a k, this would be a k. And instead of just crossing off two terms, we would cross off k terms. And so if we end in k zeros, that means that that number is divisible by two to the power of k, which is pretty cool. And that works very similarly in base 10. If you end in three zeros, that means you're divisible by 10 to the third power. If you end in four zeros, you're divisible by 10 to the fourth power. If you end in five zeros, you're divisible by 10 to the fifth power and so on. So the way it works in base two is very similar to the way it works in base 10 as well. Anyways, thanks everyone, and I'll see you on the next video.